Welcome to week three of the School of Knock. This week, our focus is going to be our grip. This is going to be the second step in the shot routine that I teach for each and every student. The first thing is going to be the stance, which I'm going to want you to continue to look at each and every shot. This is going to be something that I want you to start doing before you move on to any of those steps. As we progress through this shot routine, it's going to be essential that you continue to check these each and every time because sticking to a shot routine is going to build the structure and the foundation that we're looking for. So after you look down, check your stance, make sure your feet is exactly where we wanted in week two. The next thing you're going to do is look at your grip position. There's going to be two things that I always want you to think about each and every time you go through one of these steps. The first is going to be, does it look right? Obviously, in week two, I had you looking down at your feet placement. The more you start to build into this becoming a habit, the more that you're going to start to realize when your stance doesn't feel correct. So each and every time, does it look right? Does it feel right? The same is going to be true this week when you're focusing on grip. And it's something that might be a little bit easier for you to identify. So first thing I want to tell you is where your grip placement should be. Now, if you look at your hand, everybody's hand, once it's partially closed, creates what we call the lifeline of the hand. And I've diagrammed mine here in black. This line runs from beyond center of the top part of your palm down to the center at the base of your palm. You're going to want to make sure that your grip is always on the inside or the thumb side of that lifeline. If you ever cross over this line, then you're going to start to apply torque onto the riser. One of the things I want to show you is that grip position quickly not only creates torque in the bow, but it actually acts as having you counteract where you're holding on the target. Now to show you this, I've put an orange dot right on the center of this scope. So if I'm holding center right now, but I slightly torque my grip one way, you can notice that that dot moves. Now if I was looking through my peep sight in order to put my, tar my pin on the center of the target, I'm going to move that pin to the center. However, if I've already torqued that riser or twisted that riser with my grip position, I'm actually aiming off the spot even though to my sight picture it appears that I'm aiming on. So we're going to talk about torque, but we're also going to talk about hand placement because hand placement allows the pressure of the bow to connect the front wrist, elbow, shoulders all the way through. And what I'm looking for as I build this posture is utilizing your bone structure or your natural anatomy to support everything in archery so that you're not having to use as much muscle. The reason I like that is because muscle is not as consistent as bone structure. Your skeletal structure will be much more repeatable than relying on muscle. One of the ways I like to describe this is if you're into fitness at all, some days you go in the gym, you can move a certain amount of weight, but for whatever reason, the next time you go in, maybe you just can't move that amount of weight, and a lot determines that. How stressed you've been, how well you've slept, how much you've eight. So the same exact thing applies for archery. If we put ourselves in positions where we're utilizing muscle, either in our shoulders or front arm or hips, if we're utilizing muscle to try to control that bow at full draw, we're going to start to have inconsistencies. So using your skeletal structure is going to be important. So 
this placement right here is going to put the pressure of the bow through the front arm, through the elbow, and pack correctly into the shoulder socket. So when you look at your bow, I want you to think of this lifeline that we've drawn as well. And I want to make sure that you're not crossing over that lifeline to where you can't see it, just like here. I would like you to be able to slightly see the bottom edge of that lifeline where it's placed on the grip. So it should be on the inside slightly. What I coach people is if you raise your arm naturally and tell a target to stop, your thumb is going to be at a 45 degree angle. And this 45 degree angle is essentially what we want in archery. It feels unnatural if you do this and then try to tip your thumb up. You can start to feel the pressures on the inside of your arm and the same is true if you start to tip your thumb down. So we wanna be able to have a natural position and simply raising your arm up to the target, you're gonna notice that that thumb should sit at a 45 degree angle. Now one of the things I'm gonna want you to do is when your bow is beneath you, pointing towards the ground so that your front arm is relaxed, I'm gonna want you to slide your thumb while it's at a 45 up against the top of the riser or the bottom of the shelf. And then I'm gonna have you push down on the riser or on the grip so that you have even pressure from top to bottom, even pressure. Your thumb, again, should be at about a 45. However, the front bow hand should be completely relaxed. Okay, so this all plays in a part. Does it look right? Does it feel right? Look down. Tell your bow to stop or put your thumb at the 45. Slide it up against the bottom of that shelf or the top of the grip. And then press down so that you have even pressure from top to bottom and then make sure that this bow hand is completely relaxed. If you're straightening your fingers, you're utilizing muscle, which again will slowly start to change over time. If you're gripping the bow, then several things can happen. You can either grip it to where you're twisting it one way and you can see that in the dot right now, or you can put pressure on the front of the riser and push it the other way, which in either case, any variance in that is gonna magnify your miss downrange. The other thing is, the reason this thumb pressure is important is because it's very close to the riser. So if you take your thumb and you start to put it too far up, you're actually gonna push on that riser and start to cant that bow. Same is true if you start to curl your index fingers too high over the top of the riser or push on the top edge of the riser, you'll start to cant your bow the other direction. Canting or torquing are both going to affect accuracy. So be sure that you focus on both. You wanna have a 45, even pressure from top to bottom. Don't cross the lifeline and make sure your front bow hand is completely relaxed. Now, if you wanna add a few things to think about for this week three, they would be this. Now you have the time to add in extra ends to your original practice schedule of week one. The other thing you can do too is start to not only think about what your feet look like, but how they feel. Because your feet are gonna give a direct signal to your mind. If your feet don't feel stable, your mind doesn't feel stable. So this is gonna be especially important for people that are practicing outside with uneven footing. You're gonna find that even if they look right, but one is higher than the other, or if you feel like you're in a hole, or if you have the wrong kind of shoes on and you feel like you're falling forward or falling back, these signals are gonna go directly to your brain, which is also controlling the movement of the front bow. 
So don't be afraid to add in an extra end or two for extra arrows. Also, take a look at your feet. Do they look right? Do they feel right? Then immediately think about grip position. Tell your bow to stop. Don't cross the lifeline. Slide it up against the top of the grip or bottom of the riser. Press down for even pressure and draw back and make sure your bow hand is completely relaxed. Last thing I wanna tell you is at any time, if any of these things don't look right or don't feel right, but you've already moved on to another step, you need to get in the practice of letting down and canceling that shot. Because with a compound bow, when you draw this back, it actually is easier to hold it at full draw as when it's at rest. So any type of change that you make in your hand position is gonna magnify torque on the riser. And what I'm trying to stress by this is if you draw back and you're already aiming on the target and you decide that your hand position isn't in the correct position and you change it at full draw, you're more likely gonna miss. So at that time, let down. Reset, start the steps over. Good luck in week three.